Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat my dear brothers and sisters thank you for joining us today and we have uh, from uh, Sheikh Saeed Raghi from uh, Toronto may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him for his time and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect him so inshallah we have few questions for the Sheikh to ask him uh, the first question is that what is considered in Islam uh, full hijab so jazak Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al-kareem Sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in First of all I'd like to thank the brothers May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are doing this recording M2M production May Allah reward them and may Allah put this on their scale of hasanat on the day of Yom al-Qiyam Before I answer this question I'd like just to make one comment concerning the sisters and hijab in general. One thing that the sisters need to understand is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose them and chose hijab for them. When, sister, when a sister is outside of her house and she's wearing hijab, she should not just consider hijab simple thing. Rather, she should understand hijab as ayah from kitabillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a sister is wearing hijab, she is a walking ayah. And a walking ayah means is Quran. And the Quran means is ibadah. And ibadah it should be done according to the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, if I tell you right now, I want to pray not facing the qibla, you will be mad at me. If I tell you I want to make hajj other than the months of hajj, or I want to go make tawaf on the White House, around the White House instead of haram, you will not accept it and you will say this is a ibadah. If I tell you I want to give my sadaqah and zakah, not 2.5%, but I want to give 9%, you know, you will be mad at me because you say, Brother Saeed, you are not following the sharia of Islam. When it comes to hijab also, my dear beloved sisters, you have to understand, you have to follow the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what considered to be a full hijab in Islam? Now, the ulama of Islam, alhamdulillah, they stated, they stated, that, they stated the conditions of hijab. One, the hijab must cover all the parts that should be covered in sharia, which means head to toe. Number two, the hijab should be baggy. It shouldn't be something that is so tight. I see some of the sisters with good intention. May Allah reward them. And I know you sisters, you have good intention when you do this. You just don't understand and maybe you were not informed about it. But I see some sisters wearing t-shirt or wearing, you know, little, you know, skirt, a little bit below her knees and wearing hair scarf. Or a sister with full makeup and she's wearing hijab. Or sister, you know, so this is not hijab. So it has to be baggy, not, you know, uh, shaping the body of the sister. Number three, it should not be see-through. Some of the sisters, alhamdulillah, they buy something baggy, but it's something that is so silky with the slightest wind, it becomes very tight on her body. It shouldn't be like that. Number four, the ulama rahimahumullah mentioned, it should, be some, it should not be something that is for the kuffar. And I know none of you would do this. Number five, what the ulama rahimahumullah mentioned, is this, it should not be flashy. Some of the sisters, mashallah, when she passes by you, you would need sunglasses because her hijab is so flashy that you will not be able to open your eyes. So these are the can, some of the conditions of hijab. And number six is it should not be the out for the dress of men. It should be only a dress of women that is hijab and of course the last that I will remain, I mention here it should not be an imitation of a certain group of the non-muslim so this is basically what hijab is however however hijab is not only a cover that you cover yourself from head to toe but there's also hijab of taqwa there's something called libas al taqwa Allah yaqul wa libas al taqwa thalika khair libas al taqwa is better than the outer libas that a lot of sisters wear. And alhamdulillah, a lot of sisters are doing good job. And welcome back to Islam for those of you who are just putting hijab. May Allah reward you all. Jazakum Allahu khayran, Shaykh. The other question is that how can the Muslims today uh, be united? And what is the unity of the Muslims today? Well, how do you see the Muslims being uh, united? Jazakum Allahu khayran, Fatah. Alhamdulillah, 
you know, someone asking this question means they're concerned about the unity of Islam, which is an excellent sign. Now, how to deal with this? Number one, if you do the following, we can, inshallah, be all united. One, follow the book of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, لأن الله يقول إن هذه أمتكم أمة واحدة. Allah said, follow this ummah, follow this ummah is only one. Second, follow the sunnah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. يقول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تركتكم على محجة البيضاء. تركتكم على محجة البيضاء. يعني Allah He left us on a messenger of Allah left us on a plain path. يعني لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك. The only person that deviates from that is a person who is heading towards destruction. So this is number two. Number three to follow. To follow, to follow, to follow the people of authority. أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول وأطيعوا وأول الأمر منكم. Three things. أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول وأول الأمر منكم. Number four. Know that you have a lot of enemies from outside, and their job is for the ummah not to be united. So don't pay attention to them. Number five. Whatever you have as a personal gain, put aside. Do not work for your personal gain. Work for the benefit of the Ummah. Imam Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu wa amir al-Mumun Umar ibn Khattab used to say, إِذَا عُرِذَ عَلَيْكَ الْأَمْرِ He said, if something was presented to you, فَأَعْرِذْ نَفْسَكَ عَلَيْهَا He said, check your nafs with that. فَإِنْ رَغِبَتْ If your nafs wants that thing, قَالَ فَخَالِفَ Be opposite of what your nafs wants. Wallahu a'ala wa a'lam. Jazakumullahu khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. The other question that Sheikh, uh, that today many people and many young people are very confused about uh, the Sunnah, uh, Ahlul Sunnah, Wal Jama'ah, and Salafis, and there's too many uh, groups that are there that they don't know who is who and who to follow, and they're looking for the guidance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. What is your position in there, and how can you advise those uh, brothers and sisters who are confused with many groups? Jazakumullah khair. MashaAllah. The question, to summarize the question is, what is the difference between Ahl Sunnah and Salafis? Are they the same or are they different? See, the first person who said or used the word Salaf is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu In Sahih Muslim, Messenger of Allah said to Fatima, Ana khayru Salafi lak. He said, I am the best Salaf, means the best example to follow. So messenger of Allah is saying to his daughter, you follow my footsteps. Do not follow any, anybody, anyone else's footsteps. Ahl sunnah and Salafis are almost the same thing. There is no difference. However, there are areas that you need to understand. Now everybody nowadays, they claim to be Ahl sunnah Person who is saying Allah is everywhere, he saying I'm Ahl sunnah the person who's saying Allah is above his throne, he's saying I'm Ahl Sunnah. The person who says, you know, you know, there, there is nothing called Sifat, he's claiming to be Ahl Sunnah. The person who says Allah doesn't know the Ghayb, claim to be Ahl Sunnah. So Ahl Sunnah nowadays is a very general term. But the Salaf are the people who say we will follow the first three generations. In Hadith Abi Bakra, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal khayr al qurun qarni He said the best of all generation is my generation. Thumma alladheena yalunahum And then those who will follow my generation that means they follow the sahaba which means the tabi'een. Thumma alladheena yalunahum And then he mentioned three generation. Now ahl salaf are those three generations and those who follow their footsteps such as Imam Abi Hanifa is he is Salafi? Yes, he's Salafi. Like, no, 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 he's, he's Abu Hanifa. He's not Salafi. No, no. Abu Hanifa is Salafi. Imam Malik is Salafi. Imam Shafi is Salafi. Imam Muhammad is Salafi. Imam Al Awza'i is Salafi. Sa'id Sa bin Layth bin Sa'ad is Salafi. Salafi, Salafi. All of those are Salafi. Ibn Taymiyyah is Salafi. When you read the Fatawi Ahmed bin Hanbal, he will say, Wa kana Salafu yaquluna kada wa kada. And he's talking about Abdullah ibn Mubarak. He's talking about Sa'id ibn Musayb. He's talking about Hassan al-Basri. He's talking about al-Zuhri. He's talking about al-Awza'i. He's talking about those people. So, the thing is, anybody who says, I'm not Salafi, he doesn't understand what he's saying. 
Because if you say I'm not Salaf, you, it means you're not following the Aimma, you're not following the Tabi'een, you're not following the Sahaba, you're not following the Messenger of Allah. And none of you will say that. But you have a lot of people who misuse the word to the point that a lot of you know Muslims they don't want to hear the word Salaf. I don't want to be Salaf, Salaf. A'udhu billah. No, Salaf is the way. There's no difference between Ahl Sunnah and the Salaf. The man who called us Ahl Sunnah was Salafi. Who was he? Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu. He is the one who called us Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. He was Salafi. He was part of the Salaf. The Sahaba was Salaf. The Tabi'in was Salaf. The Imma was Salaf. So do not let anybody fool you and say, you know, you should come to my group and leave these Salafis. Because if he says, leave these Salafis, then you left Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you left Abu Bakr radiyallahu an, you left Abu Hanifa radiyallahu an, you left Ibn Qayyim al-Jawzi, Ibn Kathir al-Bukhari, Tirmidhi, and all of this as Salaf. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who understand the words of Allah and the Sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahu a'la wa a'lam. Jazakum Allahu khayran and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. And uh, the other question that uh, we have is, do the uh, women get hurnain in the, in the hereafter when they die? Do they get hurnain? And uh, if they died with a different husband, which husband will they come with? Jazakumullahu khair. A lot of sisters they ask and they say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala uraban at-taraba qal lam yatmithunna qablam insun wala jan you know he talked about the women of jannah that they have black beautiful big black eyes now what about us women may say or sisters may say see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran lahum ma yashauna fiha wa ladayna mazid they will get whatever they desire. And Allah said, and we have more for them. On the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we pass, we go to a qantara, where all the Muslims would be judged between them. Then all this unnecessary desire or selfishness or anything will be washed away from our hearts. And the sisters, they will get what they deserve and what they like, as Allah said in the Quran, لَهُمْ فِيهَا مَا يَشَاءُونَ وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٌ So they should not worry about any of this because Allah would make them happy. And the purpose that we fight in this world and the purpose that we work hard and go to school and study is for us to be happy and content. In Jannah, you have that. You have that. Now, the other question, if a sister, she, she has more than one husband, who is she going to be with? There's a difference of, the, of opinion of, between the ulama. Some of them, they will say, she would be uh, given a choice to choose the one that she liked most. Maybe the first one was very righteous, and the middle one was not that righteous, and the last one was great husband. So, which one of these three that she would marry? Especially knowing that the what female sahabi, the sahabiyat, the female companion of the messenger of Allah, they married so many men. Now, now one sahabi would marry Uthman or Ali and you know and, Ar and she would marry great scholar, great sahaba. So which of the deeds she's gonna be with? Abu Dar al Ghaf, Abu Darda radiallahu anhu and the fiqh of a great, a great number of ulama, they said the wife would be with her last husband. With her last husband. That's why Abu Darda, he said to his wife, if you want to be with me in Jannah, do not marry anyone after me because I heard the messenger of Allah saying the wife would be with her last husband. And that's why when one of the ulama, one of the uh, rulers proposed to the wife of Abdullah ibn Zubair. She said, I will never accept your proposal because I want to be with Abdullah ibn Zubair in Jannah. And she refused. So there are a great number of ulama, majority of the ulama, they believe this according to what I know. And Allahu a'la wa a'lam. Now my last nasiha to the brothers and the sisters who are watching this. 
is very concise and very important for all of us and this is a hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam and this is the hadith the first speech that he gave when he walked into the city of Medina so follow is four things qala ya ayyuhan nas ifshu salam wa at'imu ta'am wa silu al-arham wa sallu bil-layl wa nas al-niyam this is itself the hadith itself is deen he said oh people greet with one another greet one another and he didn't say Muslims, he said, greet ifsh salam just greet general greetings. وَأَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامُ And feed the people, your friends, not necessarily masakin, your friends. And then he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَصِلُ الْأَرْحَامُ And, you know, be in touch with your family members, your mother, your, you know, your sisters and your, you know, family members. And last, وَصَلُّ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسِ النِّيَامُ And perform the salah where everybody else is asleep. Jazakumullah khair. Once again, may Allah reward you all for having me, you know, M to M production. And may Allah reward the brothers and the sisters who are watching this. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khairan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put uh, this in your scale, uh, in your mizan al hasanat, yom al qiyamah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you and your family. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Wa jazakumullah khairan. And thank you for watching. And we'll see you inshallah next time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.